Good Wednesday evening, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, I honor you this evening. Uh, I hope everybody's in good health. Uh, if I could hope one thing over you this evening, I would hope that you would just be in good health. Uh, you could have all the riches and gold in the world <clears throat> and not be in good health. And none of it really... Uh, None of it really matters. But if you have health in your body, oh my God, you're so blessed. Uh, I even uh, think about when the the founder of Apple, Steve Jobs, when uh, just to, to me as a young man was so sick and dying and he owned Apple, <laughs> you know? And what it must have been like to have been so wealthy but not have good health. So I sat here this morning um, as a 66-year-old man, and I feel like I'm in good health. Uh, I'm thankful for it. I have gratitude for it. Uh, I, you know, I have the typical 66-year-old body with some inflammation. I, I get up a little slower. I, I wobble sometimes when if I get up too quickly. Uh, but for a 66-year-old man, I consider myself blessed and in good health. And for that, I'm very thankful this evening. And I would hope that upon any of you that's listening. <clears throat> For those of you who's listening who's not in good health or has, uh, who's not in good health, um, I would hope whatever virtue I have, whatever, whatever that's good within me, whatever God that dwells within my being, uh, I would send towards you and speak healing in your body uh, that 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 help would return, um, that would just return to you. <clears throat> um, so important. I wanted to talk for a few minutes this evening <clears throat> about the devil. <laughs> um, somewhere over the years, um, I've kind of lost faith in the character that's mentioned throughout the New Testament mainly, but some in the Old Testament about Satan, um, Beelzebub, Lucifer, uh, the devil. Modern day Christians call him mainly the enemy. You know, some in the Bible said, you know, when the enemy come against you like a flood, God raise up a standard. <clears throat> For whatever, you know, when we go through life, and especially in our spirituality, we can choose to believe stuff by faith. I guess if I wanted to, or if I felt, uh, felt inclined to, by faith, I could believe in the devil. But in reality, I can't force myself to believe in something that no longer resides in my spirit. Uh, <clears throat> I know that in the New Testament, Jesus, you know, has this back and forth with Satan, you know, when he's up on the mount or whatever, and the devil appears to him and wants him to renounce everything. And uh, Paul spoke about the devil. And <clears throat> um, when Jesus would come up to people to heal them, you know, uh, there was just, there's kind of an odd thing about Christianity that has God, and then that God created a devil, which is a fallen angel, <clears throat> and then the two of them are going to play this game of warfare, and Christians are going to get saved by accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and then the rest of their life, although they're saved and set free, they're going to contend with a spiritual warfare against an enemy that God has created. Folks, I just don't believe all that. You know, I'm not trying to be sarcastic, and which I can be very sarcastic and sardonic sometimes. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm not trying to change nobody's opinion. Nobody, I don't want, no, I'll, I would never want nobody to believe like I believe. I love that you believe how you believe. But if you've never heard this, there is no devil. Unless, uh, when you go into the bathroom to brush your teeth, whatever, and you take a good look at yourself in that mirror, 
That's your biggest enemy. That's also your biggest savior. It's all, we're all those things. In our human experience, we have the ability to be, to be very cruel. We can rape, we can maim, we can burn people alive. We can, you know, the Christians, Christians talk about, oh, the enemy, well, some, if you go back through history, the Christians were some of the most vicious, brutal, unmerciful p- group of people around. <clears throat> and actually, if you turn on Facebook today, many of them still are. <clears throat> I seen a thing a while back said that, why didn't we question the ones who were burning women that they called witches. We question the witches, but we never question who are the kind of people that burn human beings alive, you know? Uh, We would think that would be the devil. So anyhow, in this walk I have now, uh, I've dealt with years for, uh, with a child that was heavily drug addicted. Um, I was raised in a family where there were child molesters that comfortably were just hid among other family members and they knew that they had molested children. (coughs) Somebody would say, well, surely that's evidence of the devil. No, it's evidence of humans, you know, (laughs) Paul said, where does all the wars even start from? He said, is it not within our very body? Our our members are warring against each other. Some latter-day thinkers, later-day thinkers, would think that when Jesus was speaking to the devil, that he was actually uh, just having a conversation between his will and his body that was working against each other. You know, in the cartoons, we always have these little... A little angel on this shoulder and a little devil on this shoulder. And the angel says, oh, be kind, be sweet. And the devil's like, oh, dude, you know. Both of them we carry with us. Um, nowadays, when I, when, I, when I hear somebody make a post or, or they post a video and they so casually say, well, you know, the enemy's really been coming against me. And, you know, uh, my, my daughter got locked up last week and the enemy's trying to destroy my children. The enemy's trying to bring... Water. <clears throat> we create our enemy. Um, that enemy is is us. Um, I don't I don't live my life in fear of oh what if I make the devil mad? Shit on the devil. <laughs> the devil has no space in me. I don't even believe in the devil, but. People, Satan, Satan has no place at 2486 Constant Street <clears throat> because there is no Satan. There is no devil. There is no Lucifer. There is no Beelzebub. There is no father of darkness. It's all us. Uh, <clears throat> and I guess somebody could rightfully say, well, my God, Eddie, if you don't, all these things about the Bible, you no longer believe. You don't believe in the devil. You don't believe in an eternal lake of fire. You don't believe in an angry God that's going to cast judgment on us. Why, why even believe in God? I don't know if I really do in the biblical sense. You know, if, if the schizophrenic God in the Bible, uh, who, who's doing a lot of that, uh, I don't know if I believe in so much that. Um, I'll always believe in Jesus. And I'll tell you why. It's nothing, no, there's no verse. There's no chapter. There's no words that Jesus said. You know, and he said some beautiful things. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall see God. Come unto me, all you that are labor, uh, that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. <clears throat> Jesus said some beautiful things. It's not because of any of that. It's not because of anything in the Bible why I believe in Jesus. I tell you why I believe in Jesus. Because when I was a little boy, maybe eight, ten years old, uh, 
I would pray to Jesus. And I was, my life was in danger and I felt very threatened. And I'm not saying Jesus actually protected me, but there was something about that little boy that got a lot of comfort from believing and calling upon the name of Jesus. He walked with me through my childhood years. Even though he has promised that he would never forsake us, he don't forsake you when you're gay, he don't forsake you when you're meth head, he don't forsake you when you're an alcoholic, he don't forsake you, Jesus never forsakes. The church will tell you Jesus will forsake you over X, Y, Z, or put distance between you and Jesus because of X, Y, Z, but they lie. The church has always propagated many, many mistruths and outright lies. <laughs> so I'll, having said that, but because of my experience with him as a little boy, I'll never forsake Jesus. <clears throat> but um, but, I, but and when I say, uh, if, if someone says, well, you don't believe in Satan, you don't believe in a lake of fire, you don't believe in an angry God, uh, my God, what? Do you even believe in God? Ironically, more so now than ever, I don't necessarily believe in the Christian God, the Muslim God. <clears throat> I believe in the vibrational force of life God. That's a great comfort to me in this journey in my life. Um, yes. So anyhow, my time's up. Because I say it's up, I can control that. But good Wednesday evening, everybody. Uh, be in good health. The main thing, I just want to speak over this because there's so many people sick. When I was a little boy, I would pray, and I would pray in the name of Jesus, and I got great comfort from that. I'll never let that go. But I don't have to take all the mistruths and lies and doctrines and religions of man for that to have an effectual effect on me. Um, but anyhow, I, I speak whatever source of life, vibration I have within my being. I ask that force in Jesus' name to touch you in your body if you need touch it. As, as odd as it is, that still works. Um, be healed. Breathe better, sleep better, eat better. That chaos that's swirling around in this situation somebody might be going through, take a breath, speak peace over it. Don't you love spirituality? Don't you love freedom? Don't you love freedom of choice, freedom of thought, freedom of thinking, uh, freedom to be and believe and to see and to do what it is that your spirit leads you to do without the confines of worrying about what somebody else might think? God bless y'all.